Hi again, Calc VC. Welcome back. Uh, hopefully, uh, you were able to watch the video about uh, homogeneous equations or functions. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at, okay, so what does that mean for us when we're working with differential equations? And what it does is it gives us another sort of classification of functions that we can solve uh, if, if we have a differential equation that's homogeneous. So uh, let me start by, by sort of um, defining what it means to be a homogeneous differential equation. And then we'll look at how we actually go about solving them. Uh, and it'll be our first kind of dipping our toe in the water of some more complicated uh, differential equation solutions, um, which again, as I mentioned in class, uh, you know, if you're headed down the engineering pathway, you're probably headed for um, a, a few more uh, differential equation classes. So, all right, let's take a, a, a peek here at what we can do with uh, homogeneous differential equations. Oh my, there's a solution to a differential, a different kind of differential equation right there. Okay. So um, first things first, uh, let me define, where's my mouse? Okay, there it is. Uh, let me define what it means to be a homogeneous differentiable equation. Yeah. Okay. And um, what it means, is uh, if we have our differentiable differential equation where we have some function of x and y dx plus some other function n that's also a function of x and y times dy, okay? So here's a, here's a, two variable function m, here's a two variable function m. It's a differential equation now because I have dx and dy, okay? Um, if m and n are homogeneous, of the same degree. Okay, so, so not only do they have to be homogeneous equations, M and N, okay, they have to be homogeneous of the same degree. So it doesn't work if M is homogeneous of degree one and N is homogeneous of degree two, okay? That will not work, okay? What does work is when M and N are both homogeneous of the same degree. Okay, and if that's true, okay, then we can solve. Okay, um, so first things first, that's what we mean by homogeneous differential equation. So let me just give you a quick example. Okay, um, here's a, I'm not gonna solve this one. Um, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna use it to demonstrate a homogeneous differential equation. Okay, so again, looking at my two functions, m and n, m is x squared plus xy, n is n squared, or is, uh, n is y squared. So if I put a t in here with my x, okay, and I put a t in here with my y, do I have homogeneous functions of the same degree. I do, right? This one, you would factor out t squared and you'd have x squared plus xy. And this one, you'd factor out t squared. Oh, I forgot my dx. And then I'd have my y squared dy here. And since they're both homogeneous and they're both degree two, then our differential equation, our original one, is a homogeneous differential equation of degree two. All right, so kind of building off what we talked about in the previous video, how do we know if it's a homogeneous function? Okay, we put in the tx and the ty and see, can we factor out 
the t so we get the original function back okay now we're doing that on both uh, uh functions of two variables and seeing do we factor out the same t uh, with the same degree and if we do that's called a homogeneous uh, differential equation okay so if that's true how do we solve it okay because it's not separable okay if you looked at that last one okay i'm not going to solve it but there's no way to separate the x's and the y's in this one okay uh it's there's not as there's not a it's not a separable differential equation here um so what do we do okay so and here's how we do it uh if m x y dx plus n x y dy equals zero is a homogeneous oops differential equation um that i guess doesn't matter what the degree is okay then it can be transformed into a separable one um, by the substitution y equals v times x okay where v is a differentiable function of x so what what this means is, is once we've established that we do have a differentiable a homogeneous differential equation, then in order to turn it into a separable differential equation, okay, we will substitute into the problem y equals v times x, uh, where v is a differentiable function of x. Now, I'm going to add on here just a little bit, okay, because if v is a differentiable function of x, okay, then what is dy dx going to look like? Okay. So this is my own little, my own little side note for you here. Note. Dy dx equals. Be careful here, guys. That is a product. Okay. That is a product. And so we get um the derivative of v dv dx okay. times x plus v times the derivative of x with respect to x, which is of course one. So notice when I solve this for dy, What happens? We get x dv plus v dx. And um, that's not in the theorem. I, it's theorem 5.17. It's on page uh, 374 in the text. Um, that's not in there. But we already know it's a differential function. It's got a dy in it. So we're going to have to you know, substitute that in there anyway. OK? Let's take a look at an example. It's, it's usually easier when we see an example. So let's check one out real quick. All right, so here's my first example. Probably realistically my only example for this video. I'm trying to keep them a little bit shorter. Um, so you can rewatch it if you need to. Um, here's, here's, my, here's my example. And what I'm gonna do first is just real, really quickly um, verify that it is in fact a homogeneous differential equation. And you can see when I put in ty and tx into m, 
notice there's a t squared that's in both those. And when I put in a tx and a ty into n, notice there's also a t squared. So they're both homogeneous uh, of degree two, right? This would be t squared times x squared minus y squared dx. And this would be t squared times 3xy dy. And so uh, quite clearly, they are both uh, homogeneous of degree two. So uh, this was not meant to be a trick question and good because we didn't want it to be. There we go. All right. So now that I've established that it is a, a differential, uh, a homogeneous differential equation, that means my substitution um, y equals v, oh, that's a weird looking v, vx is going to come into play. Okay. And while I'm here, I'm just going to write it out. Um, this is what dy is going to equal. And what's supposed to happen now is we are supposed to get a separable differential equation. Okay, well, let's see how this works. So over here, I've got x squared minus y squared. Times dx. Okay. I've got 3x times y, which is, of course, vx times dy, which is, of course, x dv plus v dx. And this is equal to zero. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of multiplying. Um, and we're going to move some, we're going to move some things around. So if I distribute my dx, for example, I get x squared dx minus v squared x squared dx. Now here, you know, this is 3x, this is 3vx squared, okay? 3vx squared multiplied into this binomial. So I'm going to get 3vx cubed dv, right? Plus 3v squared x squared dx equals zero. And now look, I've got my, my terms that have dx's in there. Okay, I've got x squared dx plus 3vx, oh, sorry, um, 3v squared x squared dx minus v squared x squared dx plus 3vx cubed dv equaling zero. Well, notice that all those terms, you know, with dx's now can slide over to the right-hand side and we can do, um, we can do combine some like terms and we can even factor. So let's, Let's do this. Let's combine these guys together, which is 2v squared x squared dx, and move it to the other side. Um, or, or we got to move one of them to the other side. I guess maybe we can move this, the smaller one to the other side, right? Let's move this guy to the other side. Doesn't really matter. Okay. And on this side, then we've got uh, x squared dx plus. Three, sorry, not three. Uh, combining my like terms, sorry. Two uh, v squared x squared dx equals negative three v x cubed dx. And if you look carefully on this left hand side, I can factor out x squared dx. leaving a one plus two v, uh, v squared. And over here on the right-hand side, I've got negative three V X cubed DX. So I need to move some things around. Oh, not DX, that's a DV on the right-hand side. Gosh darn it, I, I wrote it wrong. Right here, 
dv. So what I really need to do is get the v's over with the, the dv and the x cubed over with the um, over with the x's. And so um, let's let's move some stuff around. Um, if we move the x cubed, look, you're gonna get dx over over x. If I move this, we're going to get the integral of negative uh, 3v over 1 plus 2v squared dv. Okay. Now I'm going to have to move this to the next page. So if you're uh, a little behind right here, just go ahead and push pause. Um, while you follow along with your notes, I'm going to move to the next page. Okay. And um, both sides are like u prime over u. Well, really close, right? <laughs> the uh, the uh, left side is perfect, right? But the right side needs a little help, right? We need to get that negative three out of there. Uh, we need a 4v up here, right? Because I got 1 plus 2v squared down here, which means we need a 4 out here. Okay. Um, but now it's an ice, right? It's the natural log of 1 plus um, 2v squared. So natural log of 1 plus 2v squared plus our constant of integration. All right. Um, and now what I'd like to do is I'd like to make it so that we could exponentiate, right? Um, that means we have to handle this 3 fourths. Now I'm going to actually do something that you might not like. I'm going to multiply by 4 on both sides. So I have four natural log of x. That's natural log of x to the fourth. And then look, I'm going to have a negative three in here. That's the natural log of one plus two v squared to the negative three. I'm also going to have four times this c here, which is just another constant. Okay, now we're ready to exponentiate. Again, we have this whole thing as an exponent. This left side is easy. That's just x to the fourth. Um, the right hand side, you know, this is um, one over one plus two v squared cubed. Okay, plus, you know, that was plus c, so that's going to be times e to the c. And the e to the c is really just multiplying by a c. So look, I've got c over 1 plus 2v squared quantity cubed. The problem is, right, our original function was dy and dx. So we need to get rid of that v. Let me go back two slides here. Remember that y was equal to v times x? Well, guess what? v is equal to y over x. So let me go. So we're just going to plug that in right here. Again, another page. x to the fourth equals c over 1 plus 2 y over x squared quantity cubed. Um, now, now we'll just move some stuff around here. I don't want to have this in the denominator anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and um, move this over here. 1 plus 2y squared over x squared quantity cubed times x to the fourth equals c. And Um, at this point, you know, I don't really want to cube that binomial out. 
Um, so it's kind of up to you how you want to handle this one. Um, you know, at this point here, it would be nice to get rid of that x squared that's in that denominator in there. Um, so, you know, you you can split up our x to the fourth and, and bring it into that into that term. Um, you could, uh, let's see, what we need, uh, oh gosh. Well, if we're gonna bring it inside the, the cube there, I guess we need, yeah, we need a big x to the power there, but because um, because we need to get it to cancel out the x squared. But uh, we need to bring this to a power that does it even cubed, right? So we need x to the sixth, maybe. multiply by x squared on the both sides. So I can get x to the sixth. Oops, I wrote a six, I didn't mean x squared. And now you can bring that x squared into the into the thing and you get x squared plus two y squared quantity cubed equals cx squared. And that's a nice uh, that's a nice general solution as well. I mean, it doesn't have any fractions in it, so that's good. Um, we've got uh, we don't really have c isolated. We don't really have y isolated. We're not going to be able to isolate a whole lot in this one. Um, th that's because you know these homogeneous differential equations are come from pretty complicated applications. That's a pretty complicated function that we have there as our final solution. So you know th that's kind of how they how they work. Uh, they come from fairly complicated things. So. Anyway, um, that's how you solve a homogeneous differential equation. So uh, just remember, once you've established that it is differentiable, okay, um, or sorry, homogeneous differentiable, um, then you're going to substitute in y equals v times x um, because that will create the separable differential equation. It has to uh, because of the homogeneous homogeneous nature of the function. Once you've got that established, then um, separate the variables out just like we would have done before. Uh, you know, it's obviously it's gonna be a little bit more complicated because the homogeneous differential equation is a complicated function, but uh, you can isolate uh, or separate and isolate your variables, integrate them. And then um, sometimes it's just a little mechanism to try and get to a nice form at the very end uh, so that you have, a, you know, we like to have integer coefficients. We like to have all the fractions taken out of it. Um, you know, as I said in the previous video for differential equations, if you get solved for y, you know, a lot of times that's good. Solve for c, that's nice. These ones are not going to be simple for that. Um, they're just going to be much more complicated. So, all right, guys, that's uh, that's homogeneous differential equations and how we solve them uh, through what's called an integrating factor. Uh, that's a uh, that's what we used the integrating factor of y equals vx, and um, this is as complicated as we're going to get this year. That's it uh, for solving differential equations. We're not going to go beyond um, beyond the uh, homogeneous ones. So if, if they're not homogeneous, um, that's for your next class in differential equations. All right, thanks guys, and I will see you in class. Goodbye.